Hello one for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new and most recent discoveries in regards to the asteroid known as Ryugu that you see right here, that became the second ever asteroid from which we were able to retrieve samples. And when I say we, I really mean the Japanese space agency, JAXA, that has actually done this twice now. With the first successful retrieval being approximately a decade ago from the asteroid known as Itokawa and the missions known as Hayabusa 1 and Hayabusa 2. And the final samples from the Hayabusa 2 mission were officially retrieved back in December of 2020, so almost a year and a half ago from now, with various samples having been already distributed to various space agencies, with some of the samples already analyzed and the papers already published. And so in this video I actually wanted to explore some of the discoveries about this unusual asteroid, with at least one paper sort of hinting on an extremely unusual origin of this particular asteroid. Something that would actually help us understand how some of the asteroids and comets evolve in the solar system and what happens to them as they interact with our own sun. But first of all, let's briefly discuss the asteroid itself. So what exactly is Ryugu? Well, in essence, it's what's known as the near-Earth asteroid. It's also an asteroid that has a slight chance of potentially one day colliding with planet Earth. And because it's approximately a kilometer across, or about 0.6 miles, if it were to collide with planet Earth, it could create some really hazardous conditions on the surface. But at the moment, the actual risk for the collision is really, really minimal. As a matter of fact, in the next hundreds and hundreds of years, this asteroid is expected to simply orbit in the same location and to not interact with anything. But its orbit is somewhat interesting. It actually has a somewhat elliptical orbit, that ends up bringing it much closer to the Sun than planet Earth, but then once in a while takes it out all the way past Mars. And because it approached so close to planet Earth, it made it a perfect destination for a potential retrieval mission, which is exactly what JAXA decided to do. And the thing is, they've discovered quite a lot about the asteroid by analyzing the samples. Although honestly, the more impressive part was of course the retrieval mission itself. In this case, JAXA did something extremely unusual and somewhat incredible. They used a kind of a turret, or I guess some sort of a cannon, to basically fire into the asteroid with the process of the collision right here, generating a lot of debris that would then be retrieved and sent into the sample box, which could then be retrieved on planet Earth. Although I guess the actual pictures and the actual videos are a lot more interesting. This is from JAXA itself. So as you can see right here, this is the moment when that turret was fired, and that's essentially when the samples were officially retrieved. But the thing is, they didn't expect to retrieve much. They thought they would collect approximately 0.1 grams of everything. But this ended up collecting a lot more, 50 times more, approximately 5 grams which meant that a lot of different samples could be then distributed to various organizations across the planet in order to study them and to help us understand how all of this was created and what exactly happened to this particular asteroid. And the thing about Ryugu is that, well, in general it's considered to be a C-type asteroid, basically the most common type of an asteroid out there, but its shape is very unusual. We normally expect something like this, or maybe something like this. Ryugu, on the other hand, seems to be a little bit more perfect. It seems to resemble some kind of a spinning top. And it's also extremely rich in carbon. It's extremely enriched in oxygen. It's also, unlike this picture right here, extremely dark. It only reflects about 2% of light. As a matter of fact, if you were to compare it to asphalt that you see right here that reflects 4% of light, it's basically half as reflective with the darkness itself being potentially created by the enrichment in carbon on top of this. And it's also extremely porous. Basically, its density is pretty low compared to what we think of usual asteroids. So, for example, a typical asteroid would have a density of about 2 gram per centimeter cube, with a lot of C-type asteroids usually having a density closer to about 1.4 gram per centimeter cube. But Ryugu, on the other hand, seems to have it closer to about 1 which basically means that approximately half of the asteroid is just empty space, or in more scientific terms, it has a porosity of approximately 46%, and that makes it the least dense or the most porous asteroid we've ever seen, with the pores maybe containing things like water, maybe some other ices, or, for all we know, possibly something entirely different. More importantly though, this is an extremely ancient asteroid with very, very ancient material. 
Basically, this is as old as it gets when it comes to the solar system. Most of the stuff here is over 4.5 billion years old. But the material on the surface seems to be a little bit more hydrated. Basically, it might have been affected by the sun itself, with some other unusual minerals discovered inside the asteroid being carbonates, iron, and a lot of volatile compounds. But because of its unusual spherical shape, its relatively fast rotation, and because of its porosity, the original assumption in regards to its origins involved a potential collision between two relatively simple rocks. C-type asteroids that we find everywhere in our solar system. Because it's actually kind of difficult to explain this shape and this fast rotation otherwise. And that would make this asteroid a kind of a rare asteroid type known as the rubble pile asteroids. And that's of course a type of an asteroid that was formed as a result of a major collision with the leftover fragments then coalescing into a larger piece and starting to spin a little bit quicker. But there's a problem with that explanation in regards to Ryugu. It also has a relatively high organic content, which would make this explanation a little bit more difficult to assign to Ryugu. And in this case, the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description propose a slightly different but also just as exciting of an explanation. An explanation involving comets. Specifically objects that acquire cometary features as they change their orbit because of the interaction with planets like Jupiter and that eventually evaporate, changing completely and transforming into something entirely different. And obviously, unlike a typical asteroid, a comet would have a slightly different composition. A lot of organics, a lot of water, a lot of different ices, with rocky components or debris mixed in in between. And when a typical comet enters the inner solar system and starts to interact with the sun, it obviously starts to sublimate which ends up producing the typical cometary tail we see in the night skies. But as the comet starts to sublimate, a lot of the dust mantle, a lot of this rocky stuff, starts to slowly come closer and closer together, which ends up shrinking the comet, and then as it shrinks in size, also increases the speed of its rotation because of the conservation of angular momentum. And as a result of the increase in the speed of rotation, it then starts to acquire a certain shape. In this case, a spinning top shape, eventually transforming a comet into an unusually shaped asteroid, but also then depositing some of the leftover organic materials from the comet on the surface as well. And in this case, by conducting several simulations and numerical calculations by using various types of asteroids and comets, this is pretty much exactly what the scientists discovered. They discovered that this particular object spent tens of thousands of years as an active comet, and then, as it moved into the inner asteroid belt, the high temperatures from the Sun ended up evaporating the surface of this comet and ended up changing it into a rubble pile asteroid. Which in this case, the scientists believe, could also apply to other similar asteroids as well. It's actually quite likely that a lot of them were produced in a very similar way. And this of course answers some really important questions. For example, what exactly happens to many different comets that do come to the inner solar system if they don't come close enough to the sun to be evaporated completely? It also explains why certain objects out there seem to possess more spherical shapes and seem to rotate really fast, and also possess a lot of different components on the surface, such as a lot of organics and a lot of water while also obviously helping us explain a lot of other features observed on Ryugu, including its relatively high porosity and its unusually dark features on the surface. All of this could be a result of the evaporation of the comet and the interaction of the organic molecules with a lot of stuff on the surface, with the powerful emissions from the sun, then baking all of this to make it look like it does today. But that's of course just some of the recent discoveries. A lot more studies are going to be discovering even more about this asteroid and potentially help us resolve a lot of other mysteries of the solar system and the origins of the sun as well. And so until future analysis and until future studies, that's all I wanted to mention. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.